Good afternoon and welcome to this week's uh, Elliott Wave uh, Forex and Cryptocurrency Analysis Webinar. Hope you all had a wonderful week. Uh, we had a great week. It's been, uh, as always, the market has been trending for the last three or four weeks. We've been catching some great moves. The drops on the euros has been uh, some of the great trades that we've looked at. All right, so before we start uh, with the recap, I just want to remind you that uh, the video may take about one and a half hours, but you don't have to wait for that. Uh, look out for these time stamps here. If you wanna look out for each and every pair that is analyzed during this webinar, go onto any of my videos uh, under the description, go and click show more. When you click on show more, you will see that each and every pair has been time stamped. You click on every pair and it will take you right where the analysis starts. So you can only watch the pairs that you're interested in. So that will help you if you wanted to track any of the pairs that we've been looking at for the past five months or so. All right, so I've only started the timestamps in the last five months. So the, re the proper history will be for the last five months. So go and look at the pairs and just check and the, look at the accuracy of these webinars. It's been great. All right, so let's get back to our chat. Okay, so the next course, I just wanna make sure that I say the right date, because uh, last time I mentioned the wrong date. So the next course starts on the 9th of July. Bookings are already open for the next course, okay? So I'm gonna show you briefly about what we do in, uh, in our group. There's something very interesting that we're doing now that is uh, amazing. I don't think anybody or any group is doing it. If they are, then uh, they're doing good, they're doing well. Okay, so this is what we have on our Slack group. We've got all the pairs, the pairs all the pairs that we look out, we look here, are uh, all listed here. And you will find that on each and every pair, uh, let's just go Euro JPY for example, each and every pair has got my analysis daily and four hour pinned on it. So members get to see my overall daily view and my four hour view, and then we take the entries. Okay, you can see some of the members that are excited there. Sorry, Tsepo, for exposing you there. <laughs> All right, but uh, that's, that's the nice thing about, I mean, you can have any setup on any pair. So I've got analysis on every pair, a wave count for each and every pair. There's no wave, uh, there's no pair that I look at here that does not have a wave count. So members to get to do their own analysis and they can just verify and compare with what, I, what I've done. And the reason, oh, um, and, and the nice thing about uh, uh, um, being a member in our group is that uh, you know the rules that we look at when we analyze the charts. So each and every pair, so you can just see, if, we can, I, if I just click on pound, J, uh, pound chief, you will see there are two pairs. There's the daily and the four hourly chart for early charge is mostly where we take the trades, right? Um, pound New Zealand, you'll see there will always be two pairs pinned on each and every channel, okay? So there is no, this, 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 is, this is what we do in the, in the group, right? So this is great for mentorship. And also we also, we, we also do daily mentorships uh, session. Uh, every single day we analyze forecast the market for the following day. Uh, for example, uh, there is a pound US dollar, uh, pound Audi pair that we've looked at during the week that is going amazing. That is one of those 10 lot size trades are similar to uh, Audi US dollar. Okay, so this like group works amazing. It's better than any other Forex uh, site that I've seen in my in my in my life, even have to say so myself. Okay, it is not arrogance if you can back it up. Uh, our members are very happy with what we're doing. Uh, they're benefiting a lot from from all of these things here. Yeah. Right, so the best website you can find. Okay, it's not a site. But it's a nice platform to look at all the currency pairs. Okay, so that is the ninth to the thirteenth. If you're interested in the course, uh, you send me an email and I will send you the details. Okay, so let's get started. Before we start with this, uh, I said last time that I'm going to be showing you just uh, some tips about Fibonacci and some interesting things about Fibonacci and the re its relationship to the Elliott Wave Theory. So I'm gonna spend the next uh, 10 or so 15 minutes just talking a bit about, about that. So I just wanna get uh, a new screen here so I don't uh, mess up the screen that I'm currently looking at now.
Okay, so I just wanna open up here. All right, everybody happy so far? Hello, John, welcome. All right, so I wanna bring this up here so we can look at something here, something interesting. I think I wanna show up, show you uh, a chart that is so interesting that you've seen so many times on the internet, but you don't really dissect what is going on here. So look at how interesting it is. This is a full market cycle, uh, a normal one, two, three, four, five market cycle. If you, see, if you look here, you have one, two, three, four, five, a, B, C, right? This is a full market cycle. But the interesting thing about this cycle is that it follows the Fibonacci sequence. Remember the Fibonacci sequence that we looked at last time? The one, two, not the one, two. Uh, one, one, two, three, five, eight. Uh, what comes after that? Uh, eight, 13, and then so on, 21, so on. So you will see that this pattern that Elliot developed, that he found, discovered, even without knowing about Fibonacci, knowing about Pythagoras, exactly conforms to the Fibonacci sequence. So this is how the structure works. And I'm gonna take this off here. And this is why Elliot is scientific and we use it scientifically. Okay, let's take this off. If you look at the bullish sequence, it is one trend, right? It is one. So look at this cycle here, that is one. On this side, you also have one, okay? So you've got one pulse and one correction, okay? From there, you get five subdivisions, one, two, three, four, five. That is five subwaves, and there is this side, three. One, two, three, correction. So you've got three corrections here, okay? So five plus three gives you eight. The one and the one gives you two. Okay, if you subdivide further here on the left hand side, you are going to find 21 waves. One, two, three, four, five under one, six, seven, eight under two, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 on this side. So you've got 21 on this side. On this side, if you subdivide all those three waves, you're going to find one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So you've got 21, you've got 13 this side, okay? And if you subdivide further and we, here, you get five, three, five, three, five, all along. You are going to find eventually 89 waves on this side and 55 waves on this side, and all of that giving you 44, giving you that exact same sequence that Fibonacci developed in the 1300 sequence century. So even the pattern, remember last time we discussed the number of waves, uh, the number of patterns, how, how that complied also with the Fibonacci sequence. So Elliot theory is mathematical and you can actually use it with a formula. That's, what, that's how we apply it, okay? So now look at this sequence. It is exactly the same as the Fibonacci sequence. Okay, if I just clean up a bit so you can see all these numbers here, you've got one, your one, two, your three, five, eight, 13, 21, 44, uh, sorry, 34, 55, 89, 144. And so the sequence goes, okay? So that is, that is exactly the same as Fibonacci. Now look at this table that was developed by Fibonacci and most of you may not know what is going on with this table. So you guys, some, some of you already know that to get this table, you divide this by this one to get this number, okay? Or to get this one here, you could divide this number by this number, okay? But what does that all mean? What is, what, is in this, what is in this table? So what is in this table is the sequence here. If you look at the top here, it is the Fibonacci sequence. Okay, so we know that when you divide a Fibonacci number, like for example, this one, by the next number, it will give you the 0 0.618, uh, 0 0.618. Okay, 
in the first few numbers, it will not be the exact. So as you can see here, it will be 0 0.5. You divide, if you divide by one by the next number, it will be 0 0.5. But as it goes, it goes closer to the 618. So 34 divided by 55, you get closer and closer to the 618. 89 divided by 44, you can use your calculator to do that. 144, you get close to the, one for, to the 0 0.618. Okay, so this table is developed by getting these numbers uh, the, or dividing the previous number by its, pre, uh, uh, its predecessor. Okay, so then you get, every time you always get this 0 0.618 number. What is so special about this 618 number? Okay, so once you do that and you divide that sequence, you will see, and, that, and your table is completed, you will see something very interesting here on the diagonal. So look at this diagonal here. All right, let's start it. Let's start it here. Let's start this diagonal here. If you look at that diagonal, this is your first few numbers. This is your one divided by two. This is your two, uh, this is your, your two divided by three. Okay, and then all these numbers start getting closer. There's, a, there's an arrow there. Start getting closer to the zero comma. Yes, you three divided by five, you get zero comma six. Five divided by uh, eight, you get zero comma six two, zero comma six one. And as it goes towards the end of the sequence, you start getting that constancy of the zero comma six one eight. So even if you continue to that sequence, your numbers are gonna stay constant on the 0 0.618. So some of your familiar numbers, the numbers that you are so com uh, familiar with is the equality number, which is the 100%, that is your one, okay? And then uh, from there, you get the 38.2. The 38.2, let's do the 38.2 with green. The 38.2, you, you see it starts, and when it starts, it's not as close to the 38 uh, as it is in the first few numbers, but as the numbers progress, you see 38.5 here, 38.1, 38.2, 38.2, and then you get that constant C. Okay, similarly here, your 23.2, it starts at 0 0.2, 23, 23, and then you start getting the 23.6, the 23.6, see. And so the se sequence goes, the 14.6 also, there, is, there you go, similarly. And the inverse is, is, uh, applies exactly the same way. Now the inverse here is your 1,618 that we're so familiar with. It starts as two, but as it goes towards the end of sequence, you start getting the inverse of the 0 0,618, it's now 1,618. Interesting, okay? And then you get the 2,618 as well, it starts as three, but towards the end of the sequence, you start getting it as uh, the 2,618 number, okay? So this is how this table is developed and where these numbers are coming from. They are all common Fibonacci level numbers, okay? All right, so you can do a lot with these numbers. So one of the things that you can do is if you subtract one from 618, you're gonna get this each square, and if you add one, if you add one to the 0 0.618 number, you get its inverse. Okay, there's a whole lot of mathematics that you can do. You can see some of those equations if you like. Uh, the cube root of 0.618 is equals to 0.618 minus the square root. You, you can do so much with these numbers and you'll see the constancy of these numbers. Okay, so that's, that's where all those numbers come from. So very interesting that these numbers can be exactly, uh, can follow the exact same uh, patterns that Elliot has developed, okay? So these numbers come out in very interesting places as well, okay? I've got here a picture of a piano. Let me show you the picture of a piano that I've got here. I've got a picture of a piano, a normal piano. Normal piano has got eight white keys and five black keys. You see that? What is that? What is that eight? What is that five? You see here you've got two, you've got three here. Fibonacci, also in music. And the vibration sound of the E of this one is 618 of your C, your, your C note. Okay? So very, very interesting that Fibonacci applies in every area of life. So the last three weeks I said that nature follows. The, or the universe follows the rule of law. And if we understand that rule of law, we'll understand, we'll be able to understand how the market moves as well. Because that's what we're trying to unlock here. We're trying to understand the patterns. We don't know what the market is doing. So we are trying to understand the patterns that the market goes through before certain moves happen. Okay? So that is exactly what we, why we're trying to, to do. All right. So very interesting Fibonacci. And it is something that I am very, very passionate about. Okay, 
So it is also no accident that the musical harmony, I'm reading out here from, from Google, something that I was reading about that piano, the musical harmony that gives the ear its greatest satisfaction is the major sixth. The major sixth. Okay, and the E note, as I was saying, vibrates at comma 618 of the C note. That's C18. So this 618 is the golden mean. It is a sweet spot. I like to call it the sweet spot. That is where everything happens. Okay, and there is, a, there is um, a, a, an, an organ called the cochlea in the air, and that cochlea apparently loves the E major 6, and that E major 6 happens at the comma 618. Okay, so that is very, very interesting. Right, so the, the sheet spot, so that is where everything happens. So that is your Fibonacci number. You will see as you go on to the chat that 618 is always the sheet spot, but people, so most people apply the Fibonacci levels incorrectly. You just pick the tool and apply the 0, 618. It is not as simple as that. You have to apply a principle called relativity, but that's not what we're going to talk about now. So the sheet spot is an area that you find on a golden mean, and a golden mean is something like this, and you will find it on all aspects of life as we've been looking at now. All right, I think I've got two minutes now, so this is where you're going to find the golden mean. So if you've got a line here, and this line is divided into two sections, and the one section is your B, and the other section is your A, okay? The point where your A the point where your A divided by your B is equals to your B divided by the overall length. Let's call the overall length a C in this case. Divided by C is will give you the 0, 0,618 on any length. That is your sweet spot. So this is why this six, uh, 618 is so common and we call it the, the golden mean. And that is why a lot of things happen around uh, the 618. All right. Hope you enjoyed that quick lesson, but we're going to talk a bit more as the uh, sessions go on. All right, so let's get back to our charts now. Back to our charts. Uh, we are looking at Euro US dollar, and we're going to look at a recap of some of the trades that we discussed last week. And these are quite interesting how we looked at the market last week and how it played out. So when we were getting all those drops, Last week, let me just go to my summary channel where I summarize all the trades. I'm not going to spend a lot of time. I'm just going to show you that what we have been looking at. Quickly. So interestingly, uh, if you remember last week or the week before, I said that uh, I had a student who is looking at the charts from uh, India and he asked me to do this uh, trade for him. It is a Sun Pharmaceutical uh, pair. So I, I've been keeping track on this one. I don't necessarily, tr I don't trade the Indian stock market, but I did this chart for uh, the gentleman who asked for it when he joined uh, my team. So I said, Elliott Wave applies in any, in any market. Okay, so Ravi already says it's going up. So, so you can see that Elliott wave are, are applies in any market. This is the chart that I sent him and we are now already 10% uh, or 12% up on that pair. It's going very well. This is, uh, this is how it's going now. You can see, this is how it's going now. We've been looking at this pair for the last two months or so and we've been waiting for, it, for this to break out. So you can see that it's already going, okay? So, Elliott wave principle applies on any market. I'm only I'm solely tracking this just to show that this market applies. This uh, strategy applies in any market. Okay, Euro New Zealand. That is what we're looking at. We're looking for this to correct here. So if you you all know that you got all those big drops on the Euro pairs uh, during the week. I think it was Thursday. You can see Euro, hundred percent got there, done. All right, we were looking at that. And then uh, Euro, US dollar. Interestingly, if you remember two weeks ago, we wanted to buy, we buy it for upside. Okay, did not quite reach the target, but we completed our wave four. Okay, so this is how that wave completed. You can see we went to the target around the wave four at the blue box area. And this is where we were looking for a reversal. You guys know what happened on Thursday. We had the big drops in the Euros. 
that's your big drop. You can see not a peep above the blue, the blue box. Even that spike, last spike on the, on the Thursday, just came into the blue box and dropped. Okay. We did two webinars before NFP, was it, and, and before the FOMC, where I wanted this to come tag here and come down here. And then even the second one that we did, we wanted this to just come and tag here and come down. Okay. We thought we were going to get one more up, but it just went down as we had analyzed. All right. And this was uh, pound JPY. Obviously, we don't get all of them raw, right? So, but we got this move to the downside. As you'll see on the next picture, how that one actually played out. Uh, you will actually see it on the on the comments. Is it there? Um, that is pound pound JPY. I can't find the after, but what it did is it went down and then went up here. Took us for a stop, and now it is. Uh, pushing for a move lower, but we know what is going on. Okay, that is pound JPY. This is Eurocad. Eurocad opened with a gap upside to the upside last week. Uh, let's see if I've got the after. It opened with a gap to the upside last week, like that, but it never hit the stop. We were in from here and we had those drops on Thursday. Okay, and Eurochief, one of those trades that I said is similar to the Audi US dollar trade where we just wanted a correction here, move up and down. That's what we got as well. 10 lots, move up, did not reach the blue box, but we got, this, we got that move. Okay, that is Eurochief. And finally, this is the chart that I posted when did I post this beginning of May. So this is before we're going to look at the, these two charts now. This is before you got that wave four in green. So I have to show you this so you can see how this plays out. Okay. This wave four in green, wave five in green, and then we got the wave five in red that has played out now. And now we got that drop in wave five that happened on Thursday. Okay, we now expecting a correction, but we still want the wave five to continue. Similarly here, you got the uh, wave, uh, wave four in red and then the five here. And we are now looking, we are now looking uh, to continue with wave five in the week ahead. Okay, so all very interesting. And I can't talk more about Audi US dollar how the US dollar you will see as we go on to the trade, how well it has played out from uh, that a session last week that you are going to get a nine out of 10 probability of a good trade in that pair and it is now playing out. Okay, so let us start to now with uh, the correlation between the Euro, US dollar and the dollar index. I think I've already shown more of that and how that has been playing out. So I'm not going, I'm just going to take off the US dollar index as everything you can see that it has lined up according to the analysis that uh, four in lower degree on both pairs, let's, let's do it quickly. Four has played out now, four has played out now. We played out with five in green, we played out with five in green. How did we know that we're going to get that big one in wave four? Okay, we even traded this big one on the euro, this move here, it was this one here all right so now we're trading that way five down and that is in red degree okay in red degree okay did we know what the euro that the euro so we're gonna drop anyone whichever reason that they give for the drop for the drop whether it is because of the fomc it doesn't really matter because on the 6th of may you would have you would not have known that this was going to happen and this is what was forecasted one two three four five six waves trade uh, forecasted way before it happened. Okay, so let's now look so we can have uh, a clearer picture on Euro US dollar individually as it is. We all know that whatever happens on the Euro US dollar is the complete inverse of what is happening on the dollar index. There's nothing more to show here because we already have the drop, you can see, we're already in wave five. This, I don't believe that is a reversal. We still need to get a correction to take it further down. Okay, so that's what we're gonna be looking for. Wait for correction to enter. I'm not looking for that upside. If it comes, I'm not in it unless I see a proper buy setup. Okay, so that is Euro. Now pound US dollar. 
get pound US dollar. Pound US dollar, we are now looking for a bounce and a correction here. Okay, so the only thing that we don't we don't know on the, with the pound is whether the correction is going to be deep, but what we have already, I'm gonna switch off here. What we have already here is a move up, move down, and then we're getting this uh, look past looking move here. So we may come back and retest this top here. So for next week, we look at to check if we're gonna get this move to the upside during the correction, okay? Otherwise, if it, gets, if it starts correcting here like this, then this move is gonna carry on to the downside. Okay, so look out for the two scenarios on, on both pairs, okay? Uh, see there's something on the chat box. For some reason, I failed to trade these setups. I was somehow confused. I need to do away with a scalper mentality, I think. Okay, yes, you definitely need to uh, do away with the scalper ment mentality. All right. Uh, so if you look at this pound pair, we already we already have a setup for this for this move here. If I can just show you here, this is already in our. We expect both scenarios. I've only given one alternative here, where you, if you get a corrective structure here, we're going to be looking to test that level. Okay, could possibly come back here for that move over there. Okay, so. The clearest thing here to do in the next week is to correction, you're going down, and smaller correction in the one hour time frame here, you're going to retest this level here. Okay, so making this an overall sideways flat correction. Okay, that is pound, uh, US dollar CAD. So US dollar CAD, we are approaching a reversal area. Okay. It is in 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 the in the blue box. So we, let's wait and see if we don't get a sharp impulsive move to the downside. Okay, that's what we're gonna be looking for on uh, uh, US dollar cat. Okay, but it has to be a sharp move to the downside. Otherwise, you're gonna have one push higher if you get a corrective flag here. But we are in the blue box, so whatever impulse we get to the downside and a correction, we take the trade. Okay. That is US dollar CAD, US dollar chief. So US dollar chief, last three weeks, we've been talking about this bouncing to the upside and now you've got that bounce. It looks like you are going to retest this top. It's correcting here now. Minimum, you're gonna get to that level. Okay, minimum, you're gonna get to that level because uh, what we're gonna be looking for is a bigger correction like this possibly to the upside, if this is not all the correction. So just remember what this is, this is in the lower degree. This is a leading diagonal in wave A that we've been looking at for the last couple of months. So we are currently in this. So this A here can do this and do that and go, okay? This will still be your B, it does not change any structure. So this is why you need to uh, be aware of the possibility of this down here before it goes. Otherwise, this could be the B that has ended here. That's the only thing that you will not know at this stage. It is corrective, but is that correction enough? But looking at this structure here, this correction needs to be a little bit more for, more for further upside. If it does this, an even better move for me. Okay. Okay. Good. So that is the US dollar chief. US dollar za. Okay, uh, my chart is very cluttered. I should have I shouldn't have shown all those moves in one pair. So let's just go to the lower time frame here on the one hour. Maybe it will be a lot clearer, much clearer. You are still going to get a push higher here. We are busy with the wave five, the last push in wave five. We've got an extended, a clear structure in wave five. Those who like to trade one, two, three, four, fives only, or understand. Actually, it's easier to understand the one, two, three, four, five moves than any other. Uh, move. You can see here we started this move here right at the bottom with a one expanding flat and then got a two. Okay, we took we took the time we took profits here because we were only looking that this is going to do that and reverse. So when we got here, took profits, but then it started it started doing that. Another flag, take profit. Flag. Now you can see that we are now extending this wave three. Okay, and then wave three extended. We said a couple of weeks back, three two weeks back, that this is going to make a running flat. Okay. I showed you that it's gonna make a running flat or an expanding flat before it goes. There you can see you've got a nice running flat there. Now we have got an extended wave five with clear pulse wave two, clear pulse wave four, 
clear pass with four in in the green. In the pass here, we're looking for a wave five in green. Okay, we're still gonna get a, a slight push higher in this pair. Okay, slight push higher. It's very risky to buy at the top now because uh, it has now moved and it looks like the sequence is completing there. That is US dollar ZA. Okay, I don't know why I did ZA before the U Audi and the New Zealand, but that's fine. Uh, it's just on the line. Uh, Audi US dollar. Audi US dollar. Need I say more? A lot of people owe me cokes. I think 3,000 people who watch this webinar owe me a coke. <laughs> Just kidding, guys. All right, so this is what we looked at. This is what we looked at when we were here. I said, wait for this flag here. You are going to get this trade to the upside nine out of 10 times. You got that trade. Quick 100 pips in a couple of hours, target reached. And I said, all of that is simply is simply just a correction for a big move down. Go and watch that video. It was simply a correction for a big move down. So we knew that we are going up, we are trading this piece, but we're trading it so that we can get this big move to the downside. How beautiful is that? How many peeps are you in, in this? Uh, Tammy says I should get something stronger. Okay, <laughs> surprise me. <laughs> Nicholas says it's a sexy WXY. Very interesting names you guys are coming up with. That's a very lovely trait. Because this is, this is scientific and it is based on FIB levels, not the 618. There's no, uh, there's no 618 here that we're looking at. It's, it's, it's different FIB levels, so 123s and all those things. Something that we, our members know what we're doing in the premium group, not just equality, uh, but uh, a proper scientific way of trading. When you know exactly where your entry point is, where you are going to exit, and when you are going to move a trade to break even. Look at when you do pound Audi. Okay, there's a pound Audi trade that is uh, also a 10 lot size, uh, but uh, that's already laid for uh, to, to enter upside now on that part on the trade. We're already in that trade, but it's doing exactly what this one is doing. Okay, we're already in that trade, 10 lots, money in that. All right, so Audi, I don't need to talk about this anymore. If you're looking for a feather drop, a correction will take it further down. The sequence is not over to the downside. We're not done yet. That is Audi, New Zealand had exactly the same structure as well. New Zealand had exactly the same structure, which we discussed as well on the same day, but uh, at the time, the one that had a proper risk to reward ratio, what was Audi, you can see here, WXY as well. And now we got the drop to the downside. Sim similarly here, get a correction. We're still taking it down. Minimum that level. Okay, you should get a bounce that level. Not because it's a support, guys. It's because the structure is forming like that. Okay, so let's see how that one plays out. So that is New Zealand uh, Audi. I think I've done all the US dollar pairs. We can look at uh, the yen pairs. And we start with uh, pound JPY. This one, you can see I still have uh, a trade set up there. Let's go to take this off. It has hit the stop after moving down. We took it here. We got this candle down here. And then we went and hit the stop. So as I said, I'm not a magician. These things happen. But we can see exactly what is happening with this one here. Could be making this one, two, three. But we need to get this drop here first before we get a move, another move to the upside. OK, so let's watch how this one plays out. We may still get upside here. That is pound, uh, JPY. US dollar JPY. Okay, all these uh, US dollar pairs last week, we say, I said that uh, they are going to get this move minimum. I thought they were gonna give us this one first before they go up, but that's okay. Does not change the structure. We're still getting one, two, three, and now we're going to retest that top over there. Okay, so if this is the case, we've got two alternatives here. Either this is a one, this is a two, that is going to take us up. Even if it's a, even if it is an A B C move that is completed with five there, and we're looking for a B. Either way, it is the same. We're going to get a move to the upside if it comes down for one. Okay. So regardless of the alternative count, we're going to get the uh, the move. And in any case, the market and the price confirms it to to us what it wants to do 
beforehand. Okay, so we will, even if you are wrong, you will still get the right trade when you've got more data. The only thing that makes you wrong, and I think wrong is not even the right word, or it's, it's just that you do not have uh, enough information at that stage. Right now, what you're seeing here is a one, two, three, four, five in the lower degree, and then this one looks like a uh, another uh, one, two, three, four, five. Let me just get my count on here. Uh, let's get it on here. On the one hour, we can see clearly see what we're looking at. Okay, as you can see here, we've got one, two, three, four, five on this side, A, B, C on this side. Whether this is going to be make a bigger A, B, C like this, you can see that we've got two alternatives. This is not supposed to be there. We could have a bigger A, B, C. And it's starting to wedge in here. So this can even be an A, B move that ends with a diagonal there that will touch there. Okay, so we should wait for uh, a move at that level. So this is a critical level. Okay, so that is uh, US dollar JPY, Euro JPY, Euro JPY, nothing new there. Okay, we spoke about this coming here to retest the top, it has happened. You can see it made it even nice and diagonal. You could not have missed this one as we've discussed in the same day webinar because I said here you had if you watch last week's webinar, you will see exactly how this was detailed. This whole structure that is now formed on uh, uh, Euro JPY. I showed you that this structure in the lower degree is showing us what is going to happen in the daily. Okay. I showed you that this has made one, two, and a correction. One, one, two, three correction. And another one, one, two, three. Okay, what did I say yesterday? I said this has completed one, two, three, four, five, right? But we need to get a bigger correction like this. Exactly as I have detailed, it has now played out as we have detailed. And the nice thing is when it is testing here at the top, you could already see that this is gonna come down. And that's why we got all those moves to the downside on the Euro. Okay, are we ready to go down here in this case? Maybe not necessarily. The thing is here, the challenge with these moves, these big moves that you got on Thursday, you don't know, you cannot see the subdivisions clearly where the one is, where the three is, but you could, this could be a one, two, three, four, and this could be a four here, and then you get a one, one more down before you go. So it may fool you and you think that we are going down here. It is corrective here, this may be the four. You could not have seen the other subdivisions because this pulse was very fast and this is one hour. So you could go, you have to go to the one hour, one hour to the five minute, 15 minute, sometimes even the one minute time frame to see what this looks like. I just don't have that time, but I, it will show me if this correction uh, plays out the way I'm expecting here. Okay. So that move that I'm showing you in the lower degree, I showed you that this is what I'm, I'm expecting in the higher degree. This is what I'm, I'm expecting in the higher degree. You see that move is happening here. But what I'm looking for is this one. Okay, that is one. Pulse, another one. One, two, three. This is why we're expecting that this here was going to make that move here because it is fractally going to make exactly the same move that I'm expecting here. And this is this move here. And this move one, two, three, four, five is the move that I've shown you one, two, three, four, five that has happened already here. So even when you get here, we're gonna expect another bigger correction, bigger than these two. These ones are similar, bigger than these two, we're gonna be expecting a correction like that one. Very, very interesting. Okay, okay. Uh, which one, Tammy? Uh, you saying, please do that one on the daily. Which one are you looking at, uh, Tammy? Okay, so uh, if you just wanna see US dollar JPY on the daily, US dollar JPY on the daily, this is what it looks like. There we go. Okay, so as I, as I was saying, the count for each and every pair we've got, and this is already in the premium group. Okay, you've got one, two, three down. You've got this one as a correction. You've got this one as an expanding flat. That's why you've got one, two, three, four, five there. Okay, that expanding flat, 
Now the question is whether we are going or whether we are going to get another one, two, three, four, one down before we go. Doesn't matter. We're going to get this straight to the upside if it's not going to be the one that goes because the move that we are looking for is this one. And if it gives us this one, we're going to put in 10 lot size straight for a thousand keep move. Okay. I'm just kidding about the 10 lots, guys. Stick to risk management. I teach 2%, not 10 lots. Okay, so let's carry on. Chief. Uh, let's just take off this. This was for the course. All right, so Chief. On the daily, you can see we are three up. One, two, three up. One, two, three correction. So let's see if we're gonna get another three up giving us a WXY. Okay, that is daily. So let's just go lower time frame for our. You can see we've got a one, two, three structure, regular flat looking kind of structure. So if it starts doing this here, yeah, watch out. If it starts doing this like this, you're gonna get a move to the upside. Okay, so keep an eye on this one. Otherwise, a correction like this, then the structure will change a bit. Maybe even do this before you go. Do this one before we go. So, Chief, you need to wait and see how it plays out. All right. It is easy, Katleho if you have been trained and you've learned the right way and you guys have learned the right way that's why it looks easy now okay right so let's that is uh, chief jpy any other yen pair that i've missed okay yes we still have audi let's move on now audi so it is a theme of those one two three uh, moves that we've made so we need to see if we get an impulsive move to the upside here Okay, but this is not clear at this stage. I've only put in one alternative here. So you need to see during market open how this one is going to play out. So this one is not safe to enter here at this stage. But if you start getting an impulse here and a correction, we know that the structure will be followed, that will be followed is this one. Otherwise, a correction here and a drop may be uh, a change in structure. Okay, one, two, three, that is what we've got. Let's see how that one plays out. Okay. Uh, that is uh, Audi, if I just show Audi in the daily. Okay, Audi in the daily, it is one of those uh, uh, WXY kind of trades. Okay, so this one may actually be a, one of those very, very good ones. Okay, we've got a couple of these setups right now, setting up in the group, obviously, uh, cannot. I don't have the time to talk about that in detail here all right so you'll see the one two three up one two three back on all the uh, yen pairs so we've got one two three four five here now you're getting an a and a b c move here in the lower degree this lower degree this abc in the lower is in the lower degree this abc is in the lower degree this is this uh cat jpy now look at cat jpy let me clear we're looking at a one two three four five a, B, C, this is your A, this is your B. So we're trading the B first before we get the uh, C down, okay? The C in the lower degree, okay? And that would be like something like that. And you can see that the overall structure, we are busy looking for a bigger structure, B. Okay? All playing out, has the right look, nothing forced as it's just pure plain analysis from knowledgeable analysis. Okay, this is what happens when you've got the right information and you trust the information. Okay, that is uh, Cat JPY, uh, New Zealand. So don't go and trade these lines, guys. That's that's not a trade setup. Don't trade the uh, the, the lines. That is forecast. Okay, up correction. I should actually switch this off. Correction here and upside and that's actually on the daily we have to go to the four hour you'll see on the four hour we're getting these corrective structures okay you can see one two three four five a b c flat 
So another move here, that's what we'll be looking at on the yen pairs. Okay, that is uh, New Zealand. And that concludes all the yen pairs. Let's do gold and silver. Silver and gold. Okay, so our members have all been looking for this correction here. We've been talking about this correction for a while, that we're gonna get this correction, and now we're getting this drop. Okay, I didn't actually trade this drop, I was trading the euro drops. All right, so here's a thing about correlation. When did this drop come on gold? The drop on gold was on Friday. What happened on Thursday? On Thursday, all the euro pairs dropped. Euro US dollar dropped. But while Euro US dollar was dropping, gold was doing this. So I, I get people saying, why would you say gold is gonna drop and Euro is gonna go up? So correlation, as far as much as pairs are correlated, they don't go always at the same time. There is lagging, lagging and leading, and that is a whole subject that needs to be uh, covered before you understand correlation. Doesn't mean that we, when, when one pair drops, all, all the pairs are dropping. Because if you've got Euro, US dollar, US dollar, the Euro can drop because the Euro is weak and, the, and it can drop because the dollar is strong, okay? It can also go up because the dollar is uh, weak, okay? Or you can find the sideways movement because there's nothing much happening in, in, in between the pairs. So that correlation depends on the two pairs. So you cannot necessarily say because XAU, uh, US dollar, is correlated to US dollar because of the US dollar are always going to do the same thing. You can find that gold is strong and US dollar is strong here. What happens if gold is strong? If gold is strong, it goes up, okay? If US dollar is strong, then you are also going to get uh, a, a down move here, okay? Gold strong, US dollar strong, you're going to get opposites, all right? All right, so, that's what we're gonna be looking at here. Uh, I see somebody saying, yes, can you please invite us to your premium group for a day or two for some of us who is not in the premium group yet. Uh, if you're interested in the premium group, send me an email, I'll send you the details. You do not get into our premium group without the training because we do not, I do not provide signals. So I want people to take the trades with knowledge that have been trained, that know the strategy and what we are looking at, okay? Right, so let's carry on, that is gold. Uh, so what are we looking for on gold? A feather drop for one more, okay? We need to get a corrective structure. And the similarly here on silver. So silver, I have not even done an analysis on it since last week. So I just left the lines that I put here last week on silver. So last week we said, because gold, we expected a slight up move, we wanted it to come to that level which it did, but it has now uh, pushed even higher for a slight change in structure. The structure changes like this. Okay, so this is how I adjust. So uh, let's see now how we adjust that. As much as we've got the up move, the structure is, has changed slightly. And what you are getting here now is not this X here, it's rather this X here and your Y that is now going to settle here and your X going to settle here. And that's how you adjust. I mean, if you've got this wave count, you're only going to adjust seven candles a week. Okay, it's only seven candles a week. That's it. You only have several candles a week to adjust. So it takes a minute for me to adjust a single chart. Okay. And then I come and show you guys here. All right, so that's what that looks like. So this Y is not complete yet. It may not even be a Y move. We'd have to change it to an ABC here. So let's see what we get here. One more down, back to that level. That's on silver. <laughs> okay. It is a privilege to be in the premium group. Uh, People have paid money to be in there, so you cannot be there for free. Right, so that is silver. Now let's do the pound pairs. We've already done pound JPY. Let's do pound chief.
uh, Silver, you just want to see. Okay, let's just go back to quickly to Silver. Okay, guys, I don't have a lot of time to move around. So somebody wants to see daily on Silver. Uh, what happened to my analysis? It's actually not the right chart. I think I've got two silvers here on the screen. Let me see if I can get the right one. There's this one here. Yes, that is a that is a daily. That is a daily on silver, so you can go and have a look at this one. That's what you have. So we're looking at this move, and then down. Okay. I'm gonna do it quickly because you could also always refer to the video if you did not see it clearly. All right, um, let's now go to the pound pairs. We're going to start with pound chief. So the pound pairs, if you remember, we've been talking about these bounces. We've been talking about the bounces with this down move. So we are looking for this here. Okay, we're looking for these moves. For our, all the pound pairs, exactly the same move that we're looking at. Setting up very nicely. One, two, three. We'll see how this one plays out. This one could even do this before we drop. Otherwise, this is all correction. And you trade all of them WXY style. Okay, that is a pound chief, pound cat. Okay, I always talk about pound cat and pound idea at the same time. Okay, but we'll talk about this one individually. Pound cat, as I'm saying with the pound pass, all the pound pass, you're getting a drop here. WXY, you trade out of them, WXY style. Okay, before the drop. Okay, that's what you're looking for. Uh, pound Audi, this is the one that I was talking about, the 10 lot size trade that we took. Um, just show you how we took this one. It's exactly the same, similar to Audi US dollar. Very interesting. Yeah, took it here with a plan that if it reverses here, we are going to move our stop to break even. Does not reverse, we are going up and we are going to the blue box. So in the blue box, in the blue box, it's very, very highly probable that we are going to get the big drop, okay? I don't like to use the excessive words because it gets people excited. So just trade responsibly, but we'll be looking for a move here in the blue box. Okay, that's what you're looking for in Pound Audi. But we are, we are trading this one to the upside. This is a simple WXY move. Okay, that is Pound Audi. And what else? Pound New Zealand. Pound New Zealand, I think there is also a fractal happening here. I don't know if it is on this one or if it's on the Euros, but it's a Nice fractal happening here. Yes, it is right here. Why is that fractal not visible here? So this is the fractal that I'm looking at. Look at this move here. One, two, three, four, down. Exactly the same. Let's use the bus pattern so you can see. The bus pattern. From here, one, two, three, four, five. And then we get a move up. Here, same, one, two, three, four. We are here. What do you expect? We expect a drop. This one is missing this move. We're missing this move. Okay, so these are fractals. Similar patterns. You can see exactly the same. No difference whatsoever. No difference. One, two, three, four there, and then five. One, two, three there, four there, we're expecting this move. Okay, that's why all the pound pairs were expecting these corrections to drop. 
okay? And as they drop, they're making this bigger structure here, possibly to that level. That's what you're gonna be looking for. All right, so the pound pass, we're looking for a lot of money in the coming sessions. All right, have I done all the pound pairs? Did I do pound New Zealand? That's the one that we're doing now. Pound Audi, pound Kate, pound Chief, we've done. We have pound, pound, pound Chief, right? Yes, we have. Uh, any pound pair that is missing, guys? I don't wanna skip anything. Uh, okay, so now let's start with the Euro pairs. So as we do the Euro pairs, we do the last pound pairs, which is a uh, Euro pound. So Euro pound daily. So it has been in the long consolidation since uh, the beginning, since mid-2017. Okay, so this is what is happening here. You've got a passing move down here, A, W, X, and now we're looking for this one as a Y. And this is like this, one, two, three, one, two, three, now looking for this one, okay? So we're looking for those bounces. We're looking for those bounces before we get the big move on all the pairs, all the pound pairs. Similar to the euros, we're also looking for these bounces. One, two, three. You're getting this nice correction here. You'll be looking for a move to the, to the upside like that. Okay, uh, that's euro pound. Euro chief, uh, already spoke about it on the trades recap that we are now looking for this corrective structure here. It has made three waves up. Let's see a pulse down. Let's see what happens here. Whether well, you're gonna get this up there like that, that will all be a corrective structure for further move to the downside. So sideways on Euro chief. We already had a big one, so a bigger correction will be okay. So no new trade here. Just give it a, a little bit more time to build a structure. Okay, that's Euro chief. Uh, Euro cat. We spoke about this one. So Euro chief, this on the daily, if we go to the four hour. Okay, sold it here before the gap up. Okay, this is the move from uh, Thursday. It is now reversed up here. And look, look what happens here. The, the gaps and the spikes are also part of price market data. So this is a simple one, two, three structure here. And now you're getting, you're getting a move up. So you, if you get a connection here, you're possibly looking for a move up to that level, giving you a one, two, three like that. Okay, so look out for a corrective structure here and take it up. All right, that's Eurocad. Um, Euro chief, we spoke about Euro pound, we spoke about Euro Audi. One, two, three, four, five correction. Is this an A? Are we now making a possible B here? And then a C for a further move to the upside to make this A, B, C correction, bigger one. That's what we're gonna be looking out for. So the next move here is to get a correction here to at least take it to this level, okay? That's what you're gonna be looking out for. That is Euro Audi. So Euro Audi has got a very nice structure and we're looking at a diagonal here. If I'll show you on the daily. Okay, so on the daily, we're looking at a very nice diagonal that ticks all the boxes as you can see. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. We're looking for this A, B, C here. Okay. So now we're looking for this bounce in wave four. So this bounces correlates with all the bounces that we're looking at on all the Euro pairs, all the pound pairs uh, for the next coming session. But we still trade those corrective structures. All right, so that is Euro Audi, Euro CAD, Euro Chief. I think we're done with the euros. So that concludes all the euros. We can look at some of the Audi and the CAD pairs. So if we look at uh, Audi, New Zealand, I've updated the structure here. So Audi, New Zealand, 
Okay, I'm sure you, I think I've not shown you the overall structure here on this pair. This is what you're looking out for. You've got a big one, two, three, four, five move. This is a simple one, two, three, four, five coming from the top. One, two, three, four, five, five here. And now you're looking for this A. This is your A here. And this whole thing here is a B. Now you're looking at this as one, two, one, two, three. Could this be a, um, a regular flat that goes down in one, two, three, no, cannot be another one, two, three, that will give you a W, X, Y move here. So this move to test here, and then you can expect a move to the upside, okay? So look out for this structure here, either a correction here, because you could get this one not going down in a straight line, coming down here first, before it comes down here, making this a simple one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. You see, this one will make much more sense. Okay, so let me show it to you again, because it's gonna be a very interesting one. So you've got one, two, three, four, five coming from the top there, and now this is making an A, and this whole thing is a B here. So now we're looking inside here, so one, two, three, one, two, three, one. This one will need to be a little bit bigger like this to have the same structure as the rest. So giving you WXY in the lower degree like that, retesting down here for a further move in yellow to the upside. Okay. Right, so that's how that looks here. All right. So if this is gonna come down to this level some more, you're gonna wait to see if you get continuation pattern, if you like to trade short-term trades. This move up, which I spoke about this move up, I think it was this bounce up that we spoke about last week. Okay, so this move up does not mean reversal. This can come down here, up, and then carry on with the move down. Okay, so you have to watch what happens here. All right, uh, some of the pairs that we can look at. Uh, let's look at uh, AudiCAD. AudiCAD, you're looking for upside here. Yeah? Upside, let's just make sure. No, sorry, downside. What you have here is you've got a one, two, three move down. You're getting a one, two, three correction. You're getting this here. This could be coming down here to retest here. Otherwise, this is a corrective structure. Okay. Very slow pair to trade this one. It requires a lot of patience. Uh, let's look at oil. Okay. Um, New Zealand CAD. Let's look at New Zealand CAD. Uh, let's look at New Zealand CAD. New Zealand CAD. So New Zealand CAD, one, two, three, four. Uh, let's look at this here. We're making an ending diagonal there. Let's clean this up a bit and do this properly. You've got an impulsive move one, two, three, four, and that from there you're starting with the diagonal. One, two, three, four. You're going for the last five here before you get at least a correction in three waves. Okay. So that's what you're looking out for on uh, New Zealand CAT. You've got a nice one, two, three, four. Now lower degree, you've got one, two, three, four, five here. Last move to the upside. At least a correction from there. You should have divergence, strong divergence in that level, in that area. So let's see how that one comes out. Okay. So this will drop. It won't go forever. It does not have does not have momentum to go. It will drop eventually. For at least a move to that level. Okay. That is New Zealand CAD oil. Let's look at oil now.
Okay, so oil, I said last week that we may start looking at a diagonal here. We're in wave four here. This could be an A, B, and a C in a diagonal. Okay, not clear at the moment. Uh, it's four, but uh, we know that we are in wave four on oil. Yellow wave four. So let's see if this one is gonna start playing out as a diagonal. Okay. That is oil. Now let's look at the indices. Enjoy Tapiwa. Hope they spoil you rotten today on Father's Day. See Tapiwa says he's going for Father's Day lunch. All right, so let's look at this uh, S&P 500. I still have the same lines that I drew three weeks back, uh, saying that we are looking for this to come and test this top here. It misses this one by a few points, okay? But we are now dropping here like that. Is this the drop we need to see? By confirmation of a correction, if we get a correction here, then we're gonna get that drop, which is this one here. Let's switch this off which is this one here internally, because this is the structure that we're looking at. The structure that I've been looking at is this one. This one in red, this one, two, three in red, like that. Uh, my mouse is a bit jumpy, this one, two, three here, and this move here. So if we get that move, then this is the yellow move that we are looking at. This one here, this one there, this one down, before we go up. So a lot of sideways here. So far going well, according to the analysis, we've got a gap down, gap down is an impulse. Look for a corrective structure if we're gonna go down. Okay, otherwise, if it starts correcting like this here, then we are going to retest this top here. Okay, so you do not rush in, you wait and see how this one plays out. Let's go to the one hour. So that is the one hour. So a, a gap is a very nice impulse. So you've got the pulse, you've got the pulse here, and now you're getting this. You've got the pulse also here to the upside. So this could be a pulse down, that, up there. Some will say close the gap, but this could be doing that structure, a flat correction before it goes up. Okay. And uh, Nasdaq. The Nasdaq has already broken the top that we want S&P 500 to break. Is this going to go now? Is this the end of this structure? This can possibly be the end because this we can look at as a complete running flat here, okay? So any correct, clear corrective structure here and not a pulse down means the Nasdaq is done and it is going for that wave five. Okay, let's clear that. Why do we have so many lines? Uh, let's clean, I think I've drawn two lines in different degrees here. Let's clean it up a bit. Sorry. So if we do not get the move down first, the NASDAQ is done with this running flat here. One two, three, okay, then that will be done and we are going, right? So I don't know if this is already making a one and it's going to be making a three in the lower degree here. And then that's how the sequence goes. Okay, so keep an eye and see the structure that you get here. If it's corrective, then the NASDAQ is done and it's not gonna come back for, it's not gonna come back for this one that we're looking at on SPN, uh, on SP500. UK100, or the FTSE. So the FTSE has got a drop from testing the high. So this is the high that the NASDAQ is breaking at this stage. We're looking at this one here. It's a drop, one, two, could this do that first before it does this one? So we don't know if that is gonna go all the way back or if it's gonna do this one. Okay, but if it gives you a nice cell setup here, 
then you can take it and when it gets to this level, same length as that, you move it to break even so that if it gives you this one, then you're out of the trade for no loss. That is the FTSE and the FTSE is similar to the Nikkei. So the Nikkei is now testing this top. So is it now going to give us this structure? So there's two ways that you can look at this here. This could give you this correction here and then go and test this top here. The one that the FTSE has already tested, okay? So let's look out and see what happens there. So it can, it can go one more down to give us a regular flat or it can go straight with a corrective structure here. It gives you a corrective structure. So either way you will get confirmation of what the market wants to do, okay? Correction here, we're gonna test straight. Pass down, pass down, you're going to get one more down before it goes up to that level, okay? Either way, you see the structure that you are looking to form. In this case, it is this one here. Bigger, one, two, three, before we go up, a bigger structure like that, okay? The NASDAQ has got a nice expanding, uh, a running flat. So that one is a clearer structure, but the others have not completed a clear structure. It's only an ABC move like that, which we cannot necessarily say it is all the correction. We would prefer something like this, like that, giving you a three, three, pulse down, uh, five, correction there, and then we go up. Okay, and this is the Nikkei and DAX. Okay, so the DAX, if we're looking on the one hour, just in this piece that we are currently in, we've got a move down, a three up. Now look out for this move here like that. So this one has also not tested the top that the NASDAQ has already broken. So you could still find the structure like this if you get a pulsing move down. Otherwise, if you get a corrective structure here, this will be a one, two, three move to go and test there. Okay. All right, uh, let's see how much time we have left. We can do the nifty quickly. Let's do the nifty. Nifty quickly, it will be the same as well. So nifty is close to retesting this one here. Okay, let's see if it's gonna do that right. Otherwise, this is corrective, this is corrective. So it may come back for one here before we go and retest that top. Okay, so keep an eye on both scenarios. Right, uh, looking at the cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, four hour, so in a second, <laughs> all right, let's carry on. Uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, we have been looking at this structure since the drop here. One, need to drill this clearly. Let's switch this off here. One, two, three, three wave move to the downside. And from there, from down here, this is where this correction started. We have been correcting since we ended here in the closer to the 5,000. So now we're looking at this structure like this here. So yes, last week we showed that we are looking for this here to come and at least minimum test this level. If it breaks this level, it's gonna test this ne the next one here. Either way, it does not change the structure because the first scenario where it turns here, it will give us this one, two, three wave move. And then we'll still expect the red to come back here, making this a big sideways move. And I'm still saying that we are looking for a move like that. Okay, so as far as the data that I have, this is the move that I'm looking out for. So if in the second scenario where this one does break this level, and comes down here, it will still be the same. It will still be the same. We still expect that we will get a move up 
and that will be done one two three so it's just a matter of which structure it will follow but otherwise we're looking at the whole thing as a corrective structure okay all right so that is bitcoin so we you should have got this short move to the downside i don't trace this i don't trade these short moves okay let's see what happens you can still getting a correction here so you may get come here and start that move to go and retest that level okay that is bitcoin and uh, litecoin is following exactly the same structure as well litecoin so litecoin has broken this one it has also broken this one here okay it's now broken this one so let's see how this one is going to play out okay we were looking for this litecoin to do this come here retest do that and then go up okay so now it has broken so this could just be an move here one two three we'll expect a reversal anytime here now anytime here for that at least that level because we are now have now broken this level here so it could get still an expanding or a running flat so if it is says expanding flat this will come and tag and break come back down running flat can turn anyway one two three and then so a running flat won't give you a warning so let's start looking out for a reversal around this area doesn't look like it will go far at this stage it should it should reverse at least for a bounce back to that level okay all right that is a light coin let's see if we got any divergence there yes we do have some divergence we have got some divergence there. Okay. Litecoin, Ethereum. Let's look at Ethereum now. On the four hour, Ethereum is still lagging the others. One, two, three. Now you're looking at this one as a one. Now you've got one, two, three. This one can come down here. Test this level. Let's see if we can come and test down, down, down this level here. For a move back up again. All right, that's Ethereum. So if this move is coming down correctively, it will eventually break out of this. All right, that's Ethereum and uh, Ripple. Ripple. has already done this running flat here breaks come back up here you've got a running flat so that move that we're looking at on other currency pairs is already happening here so let's see how this one plays out here so here you'll be looking for possibly here one more up okay like that okay but uh, this is very corrective here it has to break to the upside. Let's see what the structure is gonna be after it has done that. Right now you've got a one, two, three down. Now we're looking at this one, two, three, which is a W move. Let's do that clearly. A W move. Let's see how this X is going to play out. Okay, this is by no means impulsive at all. So this is a corrective move. So let's see if it's gonna break to the upside like that. Okay, that's all I had for you this week. Good luck for the week ahead. Please like and subscribe to the videos and share the videos as well. Have a great week ahead. Thank you. Cheers. Bye-bye.